I was actually uh, just going through the docs myself and thinking how good the JS ones are on GitHub. Um, just started recording. Uh, welcome to the UX Docs team meeting. And um, I'll be recording. Do we have anyone who will be taking notes? I can take notes too. Um, let us begin. We can start with uh, Chris. Chris, would you like to give us an update? Sure thing. Sorry, just trying to orientate myself a little ducks. Uh, right. Um, okay, so um, I guess I can jump straight into more of uh, the technical impl implementations and things I've been looking at. Um, we have a an uh, a ever growing docs um, sort of spreadsheet with some features and lists and ideas that we were trying to collate together. Um, it started off initially as a, um, a sort of overview of current documentation sites that we'd like and rather than focusing too much on the technology side of things because I think a very important piece of this um, this problem space is basically understanding what uh, what constitutes to successful documentation, not necessarily about the technology problems behind it. I think that's um, obviously a stage uh, stage two part of that to help support it. But um, so uh, we have broken down like a feature a feature list. Let me maybe I'll share my screen actually be better to go through. Um, uh, so yes, this kind of started off with um, some oversight of. Uh, all the various documentation platforms uh, um, for, uh, from either from platform level uh, products or also um, application level stuff and uh, language uh, orientation. So we're looking at all these different websites and trying to figure out what are some common grounds between them, um, what we think would be actually successful for um, for various documentation. Some of it is very simple. Um, and actually, I think a lot of the problem space is more about uh, the navigation from the get go to getting started, kind of orientating people to uh, to go to the right paths in documentation. Um, uh, but then obviously went further into current existing solutions out there that we could use that maybe would help us bootstrap some of this, uh, uh, these options. Um, and uh, really, um, the feature set list was this one here. No, um, so we wanted to create, well, we want to get something that is uh, open source. Um, we can obviously encourage responsive design uh, throughout the application, so it's very accessible on mobile and other platforms. Um, customization is quite important for us, so we can embed different um, uh, different widgets and things that we want to use for, for various analytics and tracking. Um, internationalization uh, for obviously uh, translation um, and seeing where to get that to work with uh, trans effects that we've currently got um, and then there's there's a various like lower level things like all the way down to how we edit things like with markdown mdx making it mostly accessible um, and then search being probably a big priority because obviously discoverability is the main issue right now um, so i think search search for me is going to be like the main focus for a lot of this because we can never completely create a navigation or an architecture of where we will you know, have the narrative from A to B for every every, every particular audience. So, um, yeah, so search can be a big focus. And there, the Agolia is actually one of the things that's used in a lot of products right now. But it's, it kind of boils down to two overall uh, directions from, from my perspective, which is essentially uh, either a Gatsby oriented product, uh, something that we've got enough resource and development uh, inside our uh, PL to help build this, but also it's quite accessible because it's all JavaScript platform and then potentially a, um, uh, an alternative, which would be using something like Docusaurus, which is very heavily inspired by Gatsby, but also a JS um, uh, open source project that is evolving quite rapidly, but it's also got some very big limitations right now um, with terms of themeability and customization. Uh, do I see a hand from Molly? <clears throat> My question was, how do these things fit into the development process? So one of the big things is, we haven't done a great job at keeping our documentation up to date. And part of that is uh, engineers who are updating, should be updating the documentation, don't know where the documentation that they're supposed to be updating lives. Um, and some of it, it's just, it atrophies because there are pieces of this that 
we haven't automated that maybe we could have, or at the very least, we haven't tested that we could have so that we would have a feedback loop of, of when we are and aren't doing this effectively. So what are the options for these two platforms around hooking this into things like CI, running tests over our docs coverage, um, things along those lines that are going to help us make sure it stays accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Um, very good question, because I think automation is going to be an important part of quality control for this, uh, especially in the future. So uh, in the meantime, I'm really trying to evaluate the bigger picture. So if we're putting in the manual work and we're going to present these documentation uh, to, the, to the world for how we want to do this, then uh, we want to have a minimum set of features that will allow us to do that in a progressive, accessible way. And then finding an option that can allow us to actually uh, automate some of that um, and test on, test on top of it. Um, maybe highlight problems or at least when we publish new versions of uh, the API that will say like oh, have you reviewed this documentation or this was this because if we uh, if we flag certain docs in in the platform as being version specific then we can run tests against that to say that uh, make sure that this version was uh, current with the uh, with the API changes um, uh, right now there's only really uh, that has versioning baked in um, off the bat is actually Docusaurus um, I have to bring that one up. Uh, yeah. Um, so we we can then do sort of version level API docs for individual platforms, and that will allow us to then dig into and see have change logs for things, um, which is really really nice and very flexible. Um, the potential downside is that we would then have multiple websites for each uh, implementation, which is kind of what we have right now, and then we'd have various um, different layers of how we present that. So I want to make sure that we can be consistent with all the representation like the styling, the, the, the navigation between, the, between them all, the search engine can like you know, jump you off towards uh, if you want to, if you're looking at a Go level implementation or JS level one. Um, but uh, from what I've seen uh, from various uh, other products right now, they're kind of they're keeping that a lot, very separate anyway. So um, it, I reckon we'd end up with just have, having like a, a, you know, core Go implementation uh, site, Willow Docs and then JS one and, and then continue from there. And, uh, same things happens with uh, React on Facebook. They've got like their React Native version, and they've got their JS core. Um, uh, I think that's quite a high-level overview so far. What else was I saying on this? Um, so yeah, so the next steps really for me. Um, I was talking with Eric last week about this. So it, it's just more about um, now. I've kind of come to this potential crossroad. It's like figuring out um, what are the limitations of these two routes. Um, how much development time do we want to put into um, uh, into some of these, these directions, or whether or not uh, we want to, um, uh, whether there are any limitations with some of the options we want to actually uh, in, uh, deploy some of this work. So I think uh, hosting it on IPFS is obviously quite a big one for us, um, and making sure that it's accessible that way offline. Uh, so I going to propose like doing a spike either next week or the week after uh, with these two versions um, and essentially see what potential technology limitations we've got and then figure out what are our, what is our core base feature set that we want to actually um, basically aim towards. Um, I, my overall feeling is that Docusaurus will get, get us quite a long way with very little development, um, but it will limit us with some customization. Um, but we might be okay considering that's sort of the approach we want is we want to have uh, we want to lean on something that's existing there that we can contribute back to um, uh, and essentially just help the whole, whole ecosystem rather than building a complete bespoke solution for ourselves. Um, but then a Gatsby approach might give us some, some of that uh, greater flexibility longer term. Um, and then we could also, that could, could potentially build into like a, a documentation platform for the entirety of PL and all the projects that other people would reuse in like a themeable way. So, um, that's roughly where I'm at with this piece. Um, that I'll just jump ahead to what I'm currently doing with the quiz as well. So uh, Eric is also, um, uh, we're working on this together to kind of give people some guidance into uh, IPFS and sort of understand the current um, limitations from when you come onto the homepage, like why, what am I gonna do with this? How can I get started? Um, so I was, I was kind of looking at some potential ideas of just simplifying the homepage and uh, changing the terminology around this as well. So. Uh, instead of being like try it and making it feel like you know you're you're experimenting with things, it's more like getting started, getting like digging deep into the actual product, um, making sure there's one clear call to action rather than two. Because learning will be more about like the next stage of um, I want to understand what I can do with this and how I can achieve this. Um, I wrote a little list of uh, 
some of the problems that I found so far with this, uh, the homepage, like I feel like the, the main primary demo is four years old, even though it's a good one, it's very thorough. Um, and we can certainly do better now and we could uh, create like a, a 30 sec maybe a 30, 30 second or one minute limit um, teaser sort of thing that will give a, a very broad overview. And there actually are some good community ones out there that maybe we could just uh, piggyback on in the meantime and use as our highlight features. Um, and then, yeah, things like uh, trying it um, rather than saying, like, let's get, let's get started. That'll push them into the quiz funnel um, and essentially say that um, I am a developer, or I am a, a, a server uh, manager or uh, working in enterprise, or I am a contributor. I want to help out with the, the project and then giving people some various different options of what they can do when they go down those steps. Um, and yeah, then just basically trying to do a little bit of an order over current the current language we're using, where it says like install implementations, getting started, whatever. Just try and simplify it so we've always got the, the same sort of approach. Um, this is something I need to discuss with Eric. He's not on the call right now, but I'll catch up with him afterwards so we can sort of. Uh, oh, see you. oh, there he is, <laughs> hiding out down there. Okay, because um, I just noticed that you've also been uh, looking on or working on this mock-up side, so we need to kind of. Uh, join forces on how we're going to um, connect those dots together and get a verse draft uh, draft in place. So um, my aim this week is to basically implement this piece. So I'd like to summarize the documentation platform ideas and let that stew for a while while I can um, sort of uh, get the get some basic implementations in. So this one is um, a good option. So we can we can actually start to make some moves on this and get some analytics on, and that can help us out. Um, uh, so that is me in a nutshell, uh, Molly. <laughs> Another quick question: um, the the doing a prototype makes a lot of sense to me because we're not going to necessarily know all of the edges we'll run into until we start trying to to use one of these things. Um, what what is the scope of that in in your view? Like, um, how long of a spike on that do we think it takes? How much? What sort of content do we want to try pouring into things? Like, um, what are you envisioning in terms of what that? roadmap of prototyping each looks like? I, I think um, I'll keep it as simple as possible. So no more than a week for, for both of those projects. Um, and basically just take the same subset of information and see how easy it is. If I cannot achieve much in, in a week's worth of time, then actually we're going to have our own issues anyway. Um, so uh, I think I'll probably take like the, the HTTP um, API level docs because they're, they're pretty thorough and they're also, um, it's, it's a very long page and it'd be great to test out the searching against. So um, yeah, I think the primary limitations is because all of these are React oriented products that uh, often run into the same sort of problems that are happening in the ecosystem right now, which is all the, the relative path issues where um, things need to be deployed at different path depths. And if you put it on IPFS and you've got it up uh, and it loads via IPNS and you end up with different path issues. So. Um, I don't think, I think we've, we've kind of handled that in Gatsby using a plugin in the past, but it was, it's not ideal because it's doing lots of rewrites on the output. Um, so it'd be nicer to have a better solution for that. But uh, it could be that Docusaurus actually handles relative paths better and that'll, that'll, you know, that'll be a double win for us. Um, but then we have to ask a question is like, is, you know, uh, is the priority here to get this hosted on IPFS or is it to improve all this in the first, first instance and make sure that we're delivering value to the overall audience and then work on stage two, which will be getting this out um, onto our own platform. Um, and it's, you know, it's good to communicate it back as a lesson because if other people are going to hit the same problems. Um, so I want to make sure that we're, you know, covering both bases. So um, need to work out a timeline for all of this. Um, uh, but yeah, I feel like, once we get the quiz out of the way and we get those metrics up, then we can start to uh, edge very, uh, very quickly towards the, these options. Um, Terry, you said that you have to leave soon. Do you mind um, quickly presenting? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so on the proto school front, we have a few different pieces of work we've been doing. Um, a lot of it involves linking, so, sorry, I'm just trying to get the right stuff on the screen. Um, we updated js.ipfs.io with a quick fix. Uh, do not drag my screen. Uh, so, on here now, when we get down to... 
uh, getting well, started. We, there are some, uh, some so essentially like tutorials that sit right on top of the page. We worked together and figured out how to get this bad boy linked up here. Um, we also, I think in the same, no, it's a different PR that we worked on a footer update for. So this is js.ipfs.io. That's just a simple tweak to get um, to get ProtoSchool highlighted there. And then there's a there's one that's in progress here on the main ipfs.io website. And the biggest thing we were doing, there was a section that was like, take closer look, that basically just says read white paper as an option. That white paper is like very technical, but not in a I'm about to code way, in a like, I went to university way, like, I don't know how to describe it. Um, so we had had a conversation on the GUI call and Ollie suggested kind of using this as a spot to include proto school, but also to include the docs. So we're, we're kind of looking at what's the right phrasing to do this. And then these would be buttons that are next to each other or when you narrow the screen underneath each other. Um, so the PR is open there. I don't think we have enough time on this call to bat these ideas around, but please feel free to hop in to that um, PR and throw out your ideas for what this, what would make more sense for this wording. Um, and then we are also in that PR updating the footer to include a proto school section. Right now it has like IPFS with 10 million categories and Filecoin and now proto school added there. Um, uh, Diogo and I just merged an update that will be hopefully, unless we mess something up, it mostly invisible to the user, but it refactors a bunch of stuff under the hood in proto school that makes the code cleaner and easier to work with. Um, and that's going to enable us to do our next step, which is finishing up that PR on enabling multiple choice as a lesson type there. Diego, what have I missed that we've been working on? Uh, yes, I think that's it. But right now that PR, it was supposed to be invisible to the users, but now it's pretty visible because we made a lot of workflow changes that uh, Makes protocol uh, proto school works uh, work super good. I think we have a lot, lot lots of issues when you uploaded files and then you came back to license and there were no cached files on the browser and everything. Uh, the things were not coherent because you you tried to submit but then you had no files. But the lesson was passed. Lots of issues like that. Now everything is solved and it's so much clearer to the user what he can do. So. I think there were some questions. Alan, maybe? Nope. All right. Thanks. Um, Eric, would you like to go next? Yes, jazz hands. <laughs> Eric, would you like to go next? Okay. I can briefly show what I've been doing. 